Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher, and welcome to another session of Not Perfect Zen. This is my contact information. I do enjoy getting emails from you. If you happen to post on social media, I ask that you use at BBL underscore Tangle so that I know that you've posted something and I get a notice. So, um, I hope you're having a great day and I'm excited <laughs> because I'm almost to the end of the 102 Tangles of Zen Tangle. This will actually be video number 30. Can you believe that? And I almost gave up. I'm not gave up, but I thought, well, I don't know if everybody's interested, but I appreciate those of you who contacted me and said you were enjoying it and you wanted to see more. And so uh, I'm working through it. And next month, June 19th, will be my fifth anniversary of becoming a CZT. And the Zentangle poster is what introduced me to Zentangle. So um, I'm really excited that I'm seeing this finally come together. Okay, so these are the patterns that I'm going to use today. And just a quick explanation of this. Um, this is one of my favorite strings to use, and I got that from tanglepatterns.com. And I thought, okay, I'm not sure how I'm going to put the rest of these together, but I'm going to use this string and I'm just going to kind of randomly pull some things together and see what happens. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you what happened in my sketchbook. And I put a note up here that says, I love the classic tile. I doubted my combination. I doubted myself, but I did it. And when I was finished, I'm like, oh, I like it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this. Again, we're going to start with this string. I have actually already put the string on my tile. And uh, the way that I did that basically was I came down the center. Let me scoot in. Okay, zoom in, not scoot in. Uh, I just found basic center and kind of tried to get the dot on each side, okay, to be about the same. Does that make sense? And then just a straight line across each one of these. All right, so that's our string. And again, I encourage you on the back to put the hashtag, which is 102 Tangles of Zentangle, and the pattern names, so that when you come back to this, you know what patterns to look for if you need to find the step outs. Um, I'm very unhappy with myself <laughs> when I forget to do that. So I will be using a Micron PN. That is a plastic nib pen. You can use any pen that you have. I will be using the graphic one because there's a lot of filling in on these, and so that helps that to go a little bit faster. My graphite pencil, my blending tool, also known as a tortillon, and I keep this in here to keep the tip pushed a little bit. All right, so we have our string down. Like I said, that was easy to do, and I am going to go ahead and ink in the string. Um, as you can see, on this one, I made it a little wavy on each of these sides. I, I think it just kind of made it look cool with finery. So two of these, I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm not going to put a border because this was uh, such a Detailed, I guess there was so much on there that I didn't want to uh, use the border. I thought about it and I thought, no, let's just go ahead and do this. Okay, so there's that one. And now for this side, I'm going to 
come around and just curve a little bit. Okay, so I didn't exactly follow the string. The string's just a suggestion. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna come around, just curve a little bit, and cut back down. So, basically we just inked in our string. And I'm going to start in the middle with the pattern squid. <laughs> Sorry. Some of these get to looking alike, and I just went kind of blank. Um, for the center, I just kind of do a spiral in, and this is just the way I like to do it, because then it you can definitely see that there's a group of something in the center. Again, this one is squid. So we're just gonna put, this almost looks like um, Bronx cheer. So just kind of an orb, roundish. This is almost looking like a square, which I don't want. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. And then it has these little arms that come off of it. No certain way to go. I like to do mine kind of wavy with a tip and then come back. They don't have to be a certain way. Just little flowy ribbon type things. And I'm going to go around And I'm touching that border, but I'm not going past it. Okay, and now we can do some kind of coming back in this other direction. It's going to go under, come back. We could have one that goes up through here. You don't have to do a lot of these, but just trying to make it interesting. Another one here. Okay. And have this one come back, go under, come up. Remember, there's no right, no wrong, no mistakes. Um, and I hope I'm staying on the screen. I was getting so into that, I wasn't watching. I have this one come around. Okay, so just put as many of those as you think you'd like. And then we're going to come down in here and just put some different sized orbs all around the center. And we're not necessarily filling it up, okay? We're just adding some that are not so dark like those. Various sizes, kind of like there's bubbles stuck on this squid. <laughs> it's not really a squid, but um, not big enough to put bubbles in there, so let's put some in here. I'll go ahead and fill that one in. You can do little ones. <clears throat> you can do bigger ones. Tiny ones. Just turn your tile. And by the way, I did not start with my gratitude. I'm so grateful for Zentangle. I'm so grateful for that 102 Tangles poster. I was explaining it to someone yesterday. that, And I, I can't tell you exactly why I was so fascinated by that. But uh, 
my brain knew that I wanted to know more about Zentangle. And I didn't actually talk to the CZT who put that poster out there because I couldn't find a time that I could schedule to be in one of her classes. But uh, we did eventually meet and the rest is history. Okay, like I said, there's not a certain number of these that you need to put. Do it until you're happy with it. And then on my other one, I put a few little bubbles that had escaped. And I think that kind of made it look cool. Different sizes going out this way. Okay. And then the other thing that I did is I kind of rounded these corners. All right. So that is squid. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am going to aura these lines. I like to make sure I point my pen toward the line that I'm trying to aura. This helps me do it better. Okay, so now we have that ready. Uh, the first one I'm going to start with is Let's do finery. So with finery, what do I do with my, oh, okay. Finery can be very elegant, very pretty, okay? So we're gonna, we already have our double line here. So I'm just gonna come over a little bit Put another double line. Then I move you over a little bit. We're going to put another double line. And then we got room for one over here. Okay, and with finery, we have kind of a little S shape that we're going to put on each side. So I'm just going to start here. And I'm just going to come over and down. And then I'm just going to keep doing that the whole way down this. Like I say, just very slight S shape. Just keep coming down. And now it's gone off the paper. Now I'm gonna come here and kind of mirror that. So now it's gonna go up and then over. So, just the opposite of what I did on that side. Up and over. Remembering to breathe. Relax your shoulders. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on this side also. You won't see that one at the top, but again, it's going to be the same as what we did on that side. Okay. 
and then we'll see part of it here. I'm not there. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you can do this inside part. The way that I tend to do it is I'll put a line and then kind of flare it at the top and come back down and then just put three dots above it. And come a little bit wider and you don't necessarily have to ink it in. So come up with the curve a little bit, similar to what we have here, and then add your dots. Okay. As many dots as you can fit in there. So I am one who worries a lot <laughs> about my videos and what I'm going to teach. And I was just really happy that I followed the method this morning and just went with the flow, really. And that's just so cool. Okay, no mistakes. Just do a little pattern here. It's kind of like an elongated, um, I was going to say triangle. Just a little flare at the top. Okay. And I've seen these done even just the opposite direction, so that they're a little bit wider where they meet here. Okay, so back over to this side. You could do these lines a little bit closer if you wanted. I know there's a lot of you that like to watch, <laughs> and that's what I like to do when I'm watching another video. See what you like and incorporate what you like into your tile. You don't have to make yours look exactly like mine. I love seeing the differences that some of you do. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And for this one, let's try it a little bit different. Let's do a wider one. We'll just do one down this side. Okay, so in my mind, I'm just thinking, well, what if I don't do it exactly like what's on the other side? And then let's bring this one over. And here. Okay. So basically we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do our S shape. Have these a little bit closer than I did on the other side. Again, this is your art. Doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Step outs and videos are guides to help you learn a pattern. And then you can vary it the way that you want it. Okay, and these lines across here, they don't have to line up. 
I think I'll just put this side. Okay, let's go ahead. These will go down. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, for this one, and the way that I did it on this was it looks a little bit more like a fescue. So I came up, kind of rounded the end and came back down and filled it in and then put my dots, okay? So like I said there, you can do a more squarish end. I've seen that. So we're doing it differently on each side, but that's just so you can see how easy it is to make a variation. It still looks good. Finery makes a very pretty ribbon. And I like the drama that this adds. To have this be a little bit dark. If you wanted, you could do the same thing over on this side to fill those in. <clears throat> Here we'll just see the dots, okay? So same thing on this side, kind of following that curve. Making our rounded end and then coming back down. And then for here, we would just see that there was one of these coming up. And here, we'll just see the dots. Okay? All right, so now we have finery on both sides. The next one I'm going to show you is Jonkel. Okay? Very simple, but there's a lot of filling in. So, Jonkel will be straight lines. I find that I do best with pulling the pin toward me for making my lines. You may find that you do better doing it a different way. So, just do what's best for you. Okay, and then we're going to start putting in our lines. And I'm just going to start on this side and decide how far apart I want them. And then just come on down and try to keep them about the same distance apart. Okay. I'm going to turn and come this way. And we do want to start where that other line ended. Okay. So we're going to start always here. Go down. Okay. I'm going to come back up and I'm going to try to do about the same angle I have there. But there's no mistakes. 
it's not gonna be perfect. Can I come back down this way? I just get my lines more even if I do it this way than if I'm trying to just ride a zigzag, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay, we're not gonna see that one. And then this one will come back down. All right, so we're gonna pick whichever one of these we're gonna fill in. Let's start with this one. And you can use your PN, whatever pen you have, to go ahead and fill this in. I do not speed up my videos, so if this gets boring, <laughs> you can fast forward past it. You can speed up on your own with the YouTube controls. Okay, so this is like doing Knight's Bridge. And every other one of these is going to be filled in. But the way that, <clears throat> excuse me, Maria suggests is kissing corners. So here's a corner and here's a corner. So this one is going to be filled in. And I'm just gonna put sort of the edges, the border on this, just so I know that's one to fill in. This touches that corner, so we're gonna fill this one in. Okay, that touches that corner. And recently, I thought, well, no, I'll, I'll figure this out. I don't have to worry about the corners. And I think I was doing Knight's Bridge, and I messed it up. Yes, it was a mistake. <laughs> you can make a mistake on a checkerboard. But um, I remembered what <laughs> Maria said. And I thought, yeah, I should have listened to her advice. Okay, I'm just going to show you real quick that now I've got my graphic one, okay, and I just love this for filling in larger spaces. Okay. And I can try it instead of the PN. Let's see how well that does. So here's a corner that matches. And even my graphic one, I think, is beginning to run out of ink. I use it a lot. The PN, the O1, and the graphic one are my favorite pens. Okay, that would be touching that corner. Okay. This one touches this one. There are graphic two pins, but I don't like the tip. I do like these. Let me show you real quick. Okay, so this is a graphic two, and I didn't realize what it was when I bought it. You can see the difference in the tips. So it's kind of flat and wide and to me it's not as easy to control but now you know what a graphic 2 is
I have often wished for graphic ones in all colors, but they don't do that. But a lot of the um, watercolor markers have an end similar to that. Actually, I'm going to put a piece of paper under this just because I don't want to get my brown paper all messed up. This one. I'm trying to do this so it doesn't take so long, but I won't be offended if you fast forward. I promise. Okay, this one. I just think this looks so cool when it's all finished. Okay, this one would come. Touch corners with that one. And these will look really different after we add shading. Shading is so important. Shading is the icing on the cake. All right, so this is the last section. Okay, then I can go back and fix any little spots if I need to. And sometimes I actually get on the side like that and add a little black. It just, it's a little finish. I mean, I rarely go all the way to the edge, but when I do, I kind of fill in that edge. Okay? So the last one we're going to do is uh, this side. And I want to show you... This is my little bijou tile with braise. And... This was a variation of braise that I saw on the Bijou Be Well series that Zentangle is doing in May of 2024. And um, really liked that. <laughs> I really had fun with that one. So um, braise is what we're going to put here in this corner. All right. And we're going to start with our pencil. And we're going to have it come out of this corner. And I'm not going to go exact straight down. Let's go just a little bit in this direction. Okay? I'm going to use my Micron PN, and with braise, we have a narrow line, <clears throat> excuse me, a big dark line, I'm sorry, narrow, uh, wide dark line, narrow, a white line, and then the auras on there. It makes it really pretty. But we're going to have this one come as if this is our first line. Okay, so we're going to kind of use that to our advantage. And now we're going to come over. So this will be our white line in here. You'll see in just a second. And let's just follow that line down to here, and then we're going to add an aura, OK? 
Okay. And now this is going to be our dark line. And the aura next to it. Okay, let me go ahead and fill that in with the graphic one, and you'll be able to see what we're doing better. <clears throat> and I do find that turning my pen just a little bit sometimes one side will get a little dry. I think more than anything, I need a new one. Okay. So, back to our in. Let's do that on this side now, okay? On the opposite. Be aware that this is going to be wet for a long time. Same thing with this side, I forgot to mention. This, where you have inked it in, will stay wet for quite a while. So uh, try to not move it or put your hand on it. Don't put your hand on it. Or keep something over it like this, okay, so another piece of paper. All right, so now we're gonna come back this direction. Okay, and then here's our dark line and the aura. Then we're going to fill it in. This one looks fatter than the other side, doesn't it? I don't know what happened. It's okay. No mistakes. Braze is a fun filler tangle. It can fit in a lot of spaces. Okay, <clears throat> so let's repeat. I think I should have done this a lot thinner. So here's our white line right here. And then the two auras. And then we're gonna put our dark line again. Let's go ahead and turn it and do it this direction. So we have that one, okay, I honestly don't know why it looks so much fatter on <laughs> this side, okay, but you have seen how it can look over here on this one. And I'm covering up this other side because it was a sketch <laughs> that I didn't like. Okay, so coming back in this direction. I have plenty of sketches in my sketchbook, especially when, because of the... Um, Perfectionist. Okay, it's the perfectionist in me. Wants everything to look perfect for you when I teach you. But uh, doesn't always turn out that way.
Okay, my graphic one is definitely running out of ink. Okay, so I do feel bad that that one doesn't look quite like I intended, but you get the idea. No mistakes, right? All right. Okay, let's get this stuff out of the way. Now we're gonna add our shading. So I have my Zentangle graphite pencil and I am gonna go just put a shadow right around that center part. I'm not putting it right on top, but just around the center and then just soften that. I'm not covering all of the little bubbles, but just those right close to the center of our squid. And then I'm going to put some graphite all along the center edge in here. Kind of makes it look like a window. And then we're just going to soften that. Okay, cool. On um, braise. We're just going to add a little bit of graphite just on one side. So we had a pencil line coming down. That was our guide. And now we're just going to put our graphite on one side and then just kind of pull it down. Make it look like it went up and came back down another side, like a peak. Okay. All right. Let's go over to John Cole. And on that one, we're just gonna pick one of these rows and add some graphite to turn just one of these rows, the white part, a little bit gray. We're gonna jump over, do the same thing on this one. So we skipped this little row or column. Skip this one. And we're going to put a little bit here. Okay. And we're going to soften each one of those. And then on that side. Okay? I don't know if you can see it clearly, but I do have gray in every other row. All right, for finery, <clears throat> I'm going to go down the center part where we have everything pointing toward that center. And add some graphite on each side. Want to keep that little open the spine. It's almost like a the spine of a feather. And then I'm not going to put one over there. And then we're just going to soften that and kind of pull it toward this part. And it's fun sometimes to use the whole tile instead of putting a border. It's kind of fun to see the patterns just kind of fall off. Okay, let's do this one. So where these meet towards the center, 
I'm going to add some graphite. I do apologize because I know there's times when my tile goes off the screen, but I do try to stay zoomed in so that you can see what I'm doing when it's on the screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So we're doing the same thing as it did on this side. Just soften that, and then I just kind of push it up a little bit into that. Shading is so important. <laughs> it just adds the icing. Makes it look wonderful. All right. So, what do you think? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Let's find a place to put our chop. I think I'm going to... Oh, not with my graphic one. Um, that would have been terrible. I'm going to put mine here, so it's not going to be very big. All right, there you go. Again, 102 tangles of Zentangle, Squid, Finery, Jonkle, and Braze. <laughs> I really enjoyed putting those together. I was just so unsure of myself when I started that. So I preach to you guys all the time to play the game, what if, okay? What if I combine all these? What's going to happen? And uh, look what we did. This is a classic Zentangle tile. I love it. I just, I love the classic method. And uh, it's easy for me to do, it's easy to learn, easy to repeat, and uh, it's fun. All right, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe, share, leave comments. Those things all are very important for my channel. We did squid, binary, jonkle. Braze and our string was 008. All right, thank you again. Come back, and uh, we're almost finished. We're almost done. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.